At Almond Options, we strive to bring buyers and sellers together in a pleasurable and stress-free environment. Our company is built on over 43 years of ethical practices and the constant refinement of our craft. If you are considering an auction, Almond Auctions has the variety of services you need to make your auction a success. We are a nationwide company serving clients coast to coast and providing over 100 auctions per year. We specialize in antique tractors, farmland, real estate, farm toys, and tractor memorabilia, just to name a few. Visit our website or give us a call for a no-obligation consultation. Have you figured it out? The tractor is an Alice Chalmers 2035. The 2035 has a large four-cylinder engine with a four by six and a half inch bore and stroke and was rated at 930 RPMs. Production ended in 1930 when it was replaced by the Alice 2540. This tractor sold at the Sutton Antique Tractor Auction in Litchfield, Illinois by Almond Auctions. To see the video of this tractor selling, visit YouTube, keywords, Almond Auction, and Alice 2035. There. I'm telling you, it's there. <laughs> if, you, if you've got your, if you've got your hook to your hand where you want it, it's there. And that's. Bill Rose told me back when I first got started. He said, when you get serious about husking, you build your own hook. That's what I did. And I moved it back about a half an inch, and I moved it over about a half an inch. And I can just, I can just take an ear now and just see there. Mm -hmm. That's what you're supposed to do, and then you keep your hands right there, because this hand's going oh, for that one, together. and you flip it with that one, see? Yeah. And it's right there. It's right there, boys, I'm telling you, it's right there. <laughs> Come on, Jake, let's go! Henry Wallace started corn husking about 1922. Uh, he was the founder of Pioneer Seed and also the founder of Wallace Farmer out of Iowa. Uh, everybody was sitting around at the restaurants bragging about how much corn they could pick, and and Wallace said, well, we need to do something about this, so we'll start a contest. So they started a couple of local contests. And then in 1924, he held the first nationals in Audubon, Iowa. And of course, so they had, by that time, they had devised a way to figure out deductions, because anybody could pick corn that's wanting a wagon. So they, they devised a way to figure out deductions uh, for the husk that left on the corn, and also for the ears of corn left in the field. And of course, so then it just kept escalating. 1925, it moved to Illinois. And of course, so we was fortunate to hold the 1925 at Burgess, Illinois. And they said it, at the time the contest started in Burgess, there was about 30,000 people there. So then 1932, we move on and they held the Illinois State Contest at Galva. They thought there was about 75,000 people at Galva, and it was won by a left-handed man, the only left-handed man to ever win a national, and a guy by the name of Carl Seiler. And of course, so 1941 was the third Illinois contest held in Illinois, and that was held at Tonic, Illinois. And people didn't realize that 1941, on November 3rd, when they held the state contest at Tonica, there would never be any more old 80-minute contest, simply because December 7th come, and all the young men went off the war, or they was too busy, or, and all the, all the gas and everything was rationed. So there was no more contest until then 1970 when it was revised at the Living History Farm. Herb Plumback, which was a WHO farm broadcaster in Des Moines, Iowa, revised the old contest. And of course, so a lot of the old pickers from the 30s come back to pick in the contest. In fact, Elmer Carlson out of Iowa come back and he won the 1970 contest and he was a 1931 national from Iowa. Well, actually the celebrity that went along, I mean, they, they wanted you to introduce seed corn. You could not take money or anything, but WLS, a lot of the people was on news shows, ABC, they was on television or NBC. They actually come to the contest and these people were highly thought of like a baseball player or a movie star. It was almost unbelievable. They was really, really highly thought of. I was saying Carl Seiler. Carl Seiler was a bachelor when he won the Nationals in 1932. He received marriage proposals from all over the Midwest, which is almost unbelievable. But I mean, I guess a bachelor, they was, they was either looking for a good husband or somebody who could pick corn fast to help dad. That's the only thing I could come up with. These are, these are pigs. This whole board is nothing but pigs. This is ivory. 
This is a, we think this is a whale bone. These are wood. This is a bone. This is brass. Brinkerhoff up of Sandusky, Ohio. They was actually the first ones to patent a peg, which was 1869. And most of these other stuff is bus or, or key or somebody like that. This is kind of neat. This is a left-hand, right-hand pig. This is a homemade pig made by a blacksmith. Pigs only cost six, seven cents. And then a lot of the ladies pegged. And there was a few men pegged. And like I say, we had a guy that won the 1925 contest. He was a pegger. But pegging is kind of a lost deal. You got to break the year over to peg. So you actually got a, a lost motion in there. Where a hook, you just rake across and take the ear out. They're made out of wood, they'll run about $10. Same way with the bone pegs. Brass, you're talking $25, $30 for a brass peg if you can find it. Once in a while, you're stumbling on one for eight or 10 bucks, which is great, but most generally they're high. People people are figured out what they are and they're, they're not cheap no more. This is a set of gloves. These, we think, I think, that they was made by a whole other company out of Chicago. These had the peg attached to them, and they had pins on them to help get the husk off. Of course, so this is a pair of, of sleeves that they actually wore over their hand, over their coats to protect their coats or their or their uh, shirts when they pick corn. So, and this is a. This is a sliding pig. Some of the farmers who show up to the contest was a sliding pig. It, it was a little more fancier, and they, they actually thought that, that it showed that they had a little money, and that's the reason they, they used a lot of sliding pigs. This one here is probably one of the better ones for, for hooks. This is, a, this is a urch hook out of Beatrice, Nebraska. This is all made in one piece. And what it sold new, it sold for 25 cents. They went out of business in about 1909. So this had to be built before 1909. This is a key pe this is a key thumb hook. This is a boss palm hook. This is a thumb hook by Joseph Ertz out of uh, Apple River Junction, Iowa, a Swedish settlement. This is an RN Thomas and Thomas uh, closed his factory in the 30s because he wouldn't pay 40 cents an hour. And then it become rate manufacturing later on out of Shenandoah, Iowa. These are all Boss. Boss was Kewanee, Illinois. H.H. Uh, Perkins was actually the founder of the, of the hook that was named Boss. He made a peg to start with. He had more patents than anybody else. Uh, they, they produced hooks and pegs in Illinois until about 1941. Now there's only one manufacturer, and it's a guy by the name of Yoder out of Madison, Michigan. And that's the only person that makes hooks, pegs, or anything. And the Amish, he's an Amish man, and the Amish still use them. The seed corn companies use pegs to still pick seed corn today. But, uh, and you'll find a lot of hooks and pegs at some of your farm sales or estate sales still today. But when I first started collecting, you could buy hooks or pegs for 25 to 75 cents. Then later years, like today, if you want a new hook, you're going to give seven to ten dollars for a new hook. And if you find a good used hook or find a hook at a farm sale today, you're going to give five to seven dollars for it, because a lot of people are picking them up for antiques and hanging them in their offices or their dens or, or stuff like that. So. Well, like the the antique hook that's over a hundred years old, like what would what would the price of that go? It's worth about three hundred dollars today. I've only seen about a half a dozen of them. They're worth about $300, so, which is kind of rare. I was, I was fortunate enough to trade for that. Up next on Almond's Album.